What is the best way to watch Avatar The Way of Water? Should you see it in 2D, 3D, IMAX, or Dolby Cinema? Well, I saw it four times over the weekend and let's talk about it. I went to two separate cinemas over the weekend. I went to the one in Danbury, Connecticut, which has an IMAX and a Dolby Cinemas. And I also went to Lincoln Square 13, which also has an IMAX and a Dolby Cinema. The difference between those two cinemas is that the one in Danbury, Connecticut has an IMAX, which I think people would call uh, quote unquote Limax or faux IMAX. And then the one in Lincoln Square 13 has an actual real IMAX. So it's capable of playing back 4K 3D and high frame rate. The one in Danbury, Connecticut, I believe is a dual Xenon and can only do 2K 3D. If I'm wrong about that, leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, on my first trip over to the movies, I saw this Thursday night, which is opening night at like three o'clock. And I saw it at the Danbury IMAX. And uh, if you watched my video that I posted a little bit earlier during the week, I wasn't exactly thrilled with the picture quality, nor was I thrilled with the audio quality. I saw it and I thought it was gonna be in 4K, but as it turns out, I'm pretty sure it was only in 2K plus 3D, plus there was no high frame rate. I went again over the weekend on Sunday, took the train down to New York City, went to Lincoln Square 13, which is about an hour and a half train ride for me. And then from there, we took an Uber all the way over to the cinema, or we could have just walked 40 minutes, but we did, we took an Uber. That cinema, just so you know, is maybe about three times the size of the one in Danbury, Connecticut. I believe size-wise, the one in Lincoln Square 13 is something like eight stories high. I think it's like maybe the third or fourth largest IMAX in the US. I think the largest IMAX is in Germany. And like I said before, the one in Lincoln Square 13 is capable of 4K, 3D, and high frame rate. And that's what I saw it in the second time around. And I will say in comparison to my first viewing in IMAX in Danbury, Connecticut, it was definitely a night and day difference. Now, when the movie first starts off, it starts off in high frame rate. So you'll see the 20th century logo and then it goes into like the forest and you'll see a, a, one of those black lion panther creatures, I believe crawling across a branch. And then it'll go into 24 frames per second when you see Natiri kind of poking through the forest. And I know a lot of people don't like high frame rate. I personally didn't like high frame rate when I saw it in The Hobbit because it looked very soap opera-y. And if you don't know what the soap opera effect is, there is that setting on your television set which you can turn on and off, which really smooths out the image and makes it look like you're watching live TV or maybe like a stage play. And that's kind of the same thing that you get here in Avatar 2. Now, unlike turning on that feature on your television set, this is actually shot natively in 48 frames per second. So you don't get that weird kind of ghosting or trail every time somebody makes a movement. So it stays nice and crisp during any kind of movement when the characters are walking or if a plane is flying or if they're Nittery and Jake is flying in one of those flying creatures. Everything stays in focus and it stays crystal clear. And the thing that I found out with high frame rate, if you're watching this in 2D, is that with those CG creatures and Navi and people, if it's in high frame rate, it tends to make the, tends to make those images look really flat, yet really smooth. So you don't really get that nice separation. It's almost, I wanna say almost a little bit cardboard cutty looking. I know a lot of people say 3D can sometimes look like cardboard cutouts, but I think in high frame rate in 2D, that extra digital, all those digital effects kind of look like cutouts, kind of like pasties that are just moving across the screen. Whereas, High frame rate in 3D really adds to the contouring of shapes and people and skin, and also how the light reflects off of the, the people's faces or the Navi's faces, and like the background elements and everything like that. I think the high frame rate really adds to the extended depth and dimension with 3D content. So for me personally, I found that the high frame rate worked really well and not so much in 2D. The one thing I'll say pretty definitively, 48 frames doesn't benefit a 2D movie very much, if at all. It's really about making a better experience in 3D. And another thing that I noticed between the two IMAXs, the real IMAX and the, and the faux IMAX, the LIMAX, is the extra brightness that I saw at the Lincoln Square 13. It wasn't like a drastic difference in brightness, but the one at the Lincoln Square 13, the real IMAX, was definitely a bit brighter. And now, one thing to keep in mind, since we're talking about brightness, since the screen is so large, it's eight stories tall, if you're going to the one in Lincoln Square 13, or if you're watching it in Danbury, Connecticut, is that the screen kind of curves around the audience. I think I mentioned this when I had reviewed either Top Gun or Thor Love and Thunder, that if you are not sitting in the centralized seats in the theater where the center of the screen curves, if you're sitting a bit off to the side, either to the left or the right, like I was sitting maybe a couple seats off from the center. The thing is with those curved screens, it 
that if you are sitting off center is that if you look straight ahead, that part of the screen in front of you is gonna be a lot brighter than the opposite side of the screen. So let's say you're sitting down, you're looking dead ahead. That part of the screen, let's say it's at 100% brightness. As the screen curves around you, that opposite end of the screen might be dim, maybe like, maybe like 10 or 15% than what you're seeing straight in front of your face. I don't think a lot of people notice that because I don't think anybody's really talked about it, at least from all the comments that I've gotten. So, I mean, if you are a stickler for video quality, that could be a real detrimental thing for your enjoyment of the movie. And this, and this is the case for the large IMAX screens or the LIMAX screens, the smaller IMAX screens. Now, going over to the Dolby Cinemas, I'm gonna have to say that this is probably my preferred way to watch this movie because this actually looks a lot closer to what my projector looks like in my home theater. It's super sharp. The black levels were better. The color saturation was better. And the resolution, since the screen is a lot smaller than the one at the Lincoln Square 13, the sharpness was also better as well. The only thing that it's missing that you're gonna get from the IMAX screening is that extra immersiveness, that eight story tall, fill your field of view, you know, experience. You, you don't get that with the Dolby Cinema It's because it's kind of like just like in front of you and you don't have to move your head. Whereas on the Dolby, whereas on the IMAX screen, the screen's so tall, you might find yourself moving your head up and down or left or right. So there's that, the, the IMAX is definitely more immersive. If I had to put a percentage of all of that, I would say Dolby Cinema being 100%, I'm gonna have to say the IMAX experience is maybe about 80% of what I got from Dolby Cinemas. Another thing that's missing from the IMAX in comparison to Dolby Cinema, even though this movie was not shot with IMAX cameras, there is extra information on the top and bottom. And if you've seen the movie back to back, you will notice that certain shots, you'll see maybe like some heads being chopped off or maybe some lower halves being chopped off. And just another quick note on the, you know, the look of the movie itself. You know, I've heard a lot of people say that this movie is like super crisp, super clean. And yes, the high frame rate stuff does look pretty sharp and pretty crispy, but very much like the original Avatar, with the entire look of the movie, I know it was everything was done in CG, everything was done digitally, but I think they might have added some digital grain to the movie, so it does look like there is a little bit of digital noise to it to give it a more cinematic filmic look, so it isn't as crispy and clean as you probably would think it would be. It actually looks very similar to the first movie, so it's not razor, razor, razor sharp. It does have a very cinematic filmic look to it. And just really quick, some tech specs. This movie was shot natively in 3D with specially designed cameras by Sony. I think they use the Sony Cine Alta cameras, which are specially designed for, for this movie. They heard us. They heard what Jim wanted in a camera system. And they were willing to take their state-of-the-art Venice camera and conform it to Jim's needs. The movie's also three hours and 12 minutes long. With that being said, the extra brightness that you get from the smaller screen in Dolby Cinemas definitely gives the image more pop, depth, and separation with 3D content. There, are, there were certain scenes in IMAX that I thought the black levels looked a bit muted, so, and certain things where there, I think some sceneries that took place in the jungle where leaves would kind of come out of the screen. I think the shot where they first land, where uh, Quaritch first lands in the forest with his, uh, his troops, there's some leaves that kind of come out of the screen a bit and that added depth was missing in the IMAX version whereas I could see the trees and some of those leaves popping out more of the screen in the Dolby Cinema version. So that extra brightness in Dolby Cinema definitely helps out with the pop out effects. I also thought the specular highlights, the HDR looked better in Dolby Cinema because there are certain times with bright scenes that in IMAX where I felt, I think a lot of those scenes where it's like you get the, the, the bright backgrounds and then you get the Navi in the foreground. I felt like I couldn't see certain clouds or some of the mountains looked a little bit blown out. Whereas on the Dolby Cinema version, I felt that detail was definitely well maintained. And just like all the high frame rate stuff I mentioned with IMAX, ports over to the Dolby Cinema 3D version as well. So you do get that extra smooth, bright, very detailed, crisp movement on those high frame rate scenes. The same as in the IMAX stuff. I just thought it worked a little bit better in Dolby Cinema with all the extra, you know, brightness and resolution. And as far as the hot spotting is concerned that I saw in the IMAX versions, the Dolby Cinema versions didn't suffer from that. So you get equal brightness uniformity across the screen from left to right. 
Now, moving on to the audio, IMAX has their own, I think like 12 channel system, whereas the Dolby Cinema has their Dolby Atmos. So in the IMAX theaters, they do not have overhead speakers above your head. So you don't get any effects like rain or chopper flyovers like you would in Dolby Cinema, because Dolby Cinema actually has speakers that go above your head, around you, and also in the back of you. And from an audio standpoint, I gotta say, the Dolby Atmos mix in the Dolby Cinema absolutely blew away both IMAX presentations that I've seen, both the little IMAX and the big IMAX. Right from the opening credits, there's so much more detail in the Dolby Cinema. When it opens up in the forest, you hear the forest creatures, the little rustling of leaves. It's so detailed. It sounded pretty much what it sounds like right here in this room in my own home theater. I know a lot of people like the IMAX audio, but in comparison, it sounded muffled and I really didn't hear that much, if really any separation or really any detail in the sound stage in the IMAX. I got the occasional kind of over the shoulder of sound effects, but you know, during those big action scenes or really subtle scenes, like, uh, like I mentioned before, that scene where Natiri and Jake are kind of negotiating with Quaritch, the rain effects, they engulf you in the Dolby Cinema where it just kind of just sounded like very muffled in the IMAX cinemas. And this is in a top tier IMAX at the Lincoln Square 13 and worse so at the IMAX at the, at the Danbury, Connecticut. So if the Dolby Atmos mix in the Dolby Cinema was a 10, I'm gonna have to give the IMAX presentation maybe, maybe 7.5. I mean, it's that much of a difference in the bass so much more thunderous in Dolby Atmos than it was in IMAX. You're thinking that you've got an eight foot gigantic screen in front of you. You're engulfed in these huge visuals. 3D effects are popping out at you. You could dive into the screen if you possibly could. The bass response in these huge IMAX screens, I mean, they were just dumbed down. This is what you would probably blame Disney for, for having really sucky audio mixes, but listening to it in Atmos, night and day difference, no doubt. Now, enough with the audio and video. As far as like the comfort level is concerned, both IMAX theaters do not have recliners, at least at these two theaters. The one in the Lincoln Square 13, however, does have some pretty nice plush, you know, rocker seats. They feel a little bit like the ones in the Dolby Cinema, it's just that the one in Dolby Cinema, your leg kind of goes up maybe like 25% of the way up. And they do recline back. The ones at the Lincoln Square 13, they can kind of rock backwards a little bit and they have nice plush leather seats also nice plush leather armrests that can lift up if you're sitting with uh, your significant other. So you can cuddle in there if you wanted to, but you cannot put your feet up in the one in Lincoln Square 13 and the one in Danbury, Connecticut is just your standard rocker seats. They're very hard, they're stiff, they're upright. Maybe the most uncomfortable theater that I've been to in quite some time. So Danbury, Connecticut, if you're watching this video, you got to update your seats because those seats suck. And also please update your laser projectors in your IMAX because it wasn't doing this movie any justice at all. So at the end of the day, I would have to say the biggest positive that I would give the IMAX is that large screen immersive feel. You also get the extended aspect ratio with uh, images, with that extra image above and below the screen, which are missing from the Dolby Cinema presentation. However, in the Dolby Cinemas, you will get better brightness, better color, better contrast, better black levels, better highlight detail, better depth and separation with the 3D versions. And the audio, I think, absolutely blows away anything that I've heard in IMAX so far. So my recommendation is go to your local Dolby Cinema, watch it in 3D, do not watch it in 2D because it was not meant to be seen in 2D. It was shot natively in 3D, go see it in 3D. Even if you hate 3D, I think you're gonna like it. If you want the bigger screen, I still think you're gonna have a great time at your local IMAX, whether it's a big IMAX or a true gigantic 70 mil IMAX. And if this movie does take off, which I'm pretty sure it will make all the money, I would like to see 4K 3D Blu-rays become a reality with 4K 3D sets very near in the future. If anything, let's see 4K 3D come to projectors for the biggest 4K 3D experience possible. Those are my thoughts on Avatar The Way of Water in Dolby Cinema and in IMAX. Have you seen the movie yet? What'd you think? Did you see it in IMAX? Did you see it in Dolby Cinema? Which one did you prefer, IMAX 3D? Or are you just a 2D guy? Leave your comments down below and let me know. Also, how did you like the movie? Did you prefer part one or part two? 
leave your comments down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in the next video.